Okay, fifth graders, chapter five, section five. This is page 198. And uh, we're talking about uh, division again, uh, using two digits. And they're talking about models in several of the examples here. And in this page, um, uh, they're talking about estimating 258 divided by 12. And they said it's close to 250 divided by 10, which is true, which would be 25. So there's a quick estimate that your answer should be pretty close to 25. Well, then uh, what they do is they've got, you know, blocks of 100 here, 100 here, and then some rows of 10. And, um, and it says they need to regroup in uh, 12 equal rows. So instead of rows of 10, we're talking about rows of 12. So it's not going to come out quite the same here. And so in letter in letter B here in this area, they they did regroup. And so each one of these individual rows right here, all of those are 12. They're not 10. And um, uh, they point out that um, there's some left over. It doesn't come out evenly. And it says right here, there's six plants left over, which was would essentially be the remainder. And um, it says there'll be 21 seedlings in each row with six seedlings left over. Um, actually, I thought it was 12 rows um, or 12 in each row. Um, let's see here. 21 seedlings in each row with six seedlings left over. I thought it was 12 in each row with 21 rows. Anyways, um, down at the bottom here it says, convince me. It says, what does the remainder mean in the problem above? Well, simply the, uh, the remainder, the, and I'm just going to put an R for remainder because we know what that means. The remainder um, is the number of plants or seedlings left over. In other words, they didn't fit into a row, a row of, of 12. Okay. Um, so let's see here. They've got something similar in number one on Do You Understand? It says, if the orchard has 200 seedlings and there are 12 planted in each row, how many rows would be filled? So if I was just to draw a line and that represented 12, and then another line, well, that would be 24, right? And so you can see what I'm doing here, 36, and then 48, and then what, 60, and 72, and then uh, 84, and then 96, okay? How many rows do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight times 12 equals 96. And then I would continue with that. And um, it says draw place value blocks to show your answer. I'm not, I'm not worried about you guys drawing a, a place value block to show your answer. Go ahead and just give me your answer. Now, if you, if you need to do it this way, I mean, that's fine. You can, you can do it that way. Um, I think it'll take you a little bit longer, but uh, you know, certainly another way to do it would be simply uh, taking 200 and dividing that by 12. Does 12 go into two? No, does it go into 20? Yes, it goes into 20 once. I'm gonna put a 12 there. Now we're subtracting from 20, what's left over? There's an eight, now we need to bring down the next zero. How many times does 12 go into 80? Well, it goes into 80, um, let's see here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six times. And the answer is 72. What's left over? Eight. Okay, so a remainder of eight. Now keep in mind that remainder, that remainder of eight is for 100, not 200. So you would actually have to uh, go from 96. What's 96 adding 12? It's 106, 108. So the next one would be 108. Okay, um, and the next row would be um, 108, would be 120, and then another row would be um, 132, 
And then you would keep going to 200 and see what you would have left over. This remainder was just a remainder for if there was 100, uh, 100 plants with uh, rows of 12 each. So it's going to come out a little bit different. So however you guys want to do it, um, it's up to you. So let's see here in problem one, what does the remainder represent? Well, it represents the same thing in that other example they gave us. It's uh, the number of plants or seedlings again, plants left over. The number of plants that didn't fit evenly into a row of 12, all right? Um, let's see here. And three and four says divide and write the missing numbers. Um, well, they're just kind of setting you up here to do these yourself. You guys know how to do these. I don't, and this one looks like we're going to have a remainder of 46. Um, I don't, um, well, okay, so look at number four, for example. How many times is 80 going to 766? Well, it's actually going to be, um, um, it's going to be it's going to be nine nine times because uh, I know uh, eight times nine is 72 72 and I'm going to add a zero there because it was not eight but 80 what's left over 46 okay that's what they're asking you to do just to fill these out and you guys can go ahead and do that um, let's move down a little bit here so you've got three more of those in five, six, and seven. Looks like five does not have a remainder, but um, six and seven do have remainders. And then they've got some that they just want you to do. Um, let's see here. How about number nine? Number nine, uh, that's, that's going to be fairly easy, right? 50 into 250. Some of you can just look at that and you go, you know what it is. All right. How many times does 50 go into 100? It goes in twice. How many times does 50 go into 200? Um, that's four times plus another 50. That's five times. So the answer to number nine simply is five. I didn't even have to really, really do any work for that one. Okay, um, I think you guys can do these. They're all pretty straightforward. Let's, uh, let's look at the last page here. Problem solving. Um, let's see here. It says, Rita's family is moving from Grand Junction, Dallas. That's this one. They're moving from there. Oh, no, wait. From Grand Junction, Let's see here. Is moving from Grand Junction to Dallas. Dallas, Texas to Grand Junction. Okay, so that's going to be 980 miles, looks like. The moving van averages 60 miles an hour. About how many hours does it take for the van to reach Dallas? Notice it says about. So we're looking for an estimate. So I think we could we could say that uh, 980, we could look at that as 1,000 since we're estimating and it's 60 miles an hour uh well how about let's call it 50 all right so how many um uh, how many times does 50 uh fit into a thousand that's the question all right um let's see here and then it says explain your work well if you just do your work right there i'm, I'm happy with that um Let's see, 15, it says, due to construction delays on the trip the little, from Little Rock to Chicago. All right, here's that one. There's Little Rock to Chicago. Um, the van driver averaged 48 miles per hour and says about, so again, we're estimated about how long did that trip take. So what are we talking about? 660, that's pretty close to 700. So we could call that one 700 and 48 miles an hour is pretty close to 50. How many times does 50 fit into 700? Well, um, 
50 goes into 100 twice, 200 four times, um, and you just keep adding. And so um, basically 700 twice, it'd be 14. So about 14 hours would be my answer, about 14 hours. Um, let's see here. Number 16, the scientist needs 72 milliliters of distilled water for each of the 15 experiments. So my first thinking is 15 times 72. She has a bottle that contains 975 milliliters of distilled water. Is there enough water for all 15 experiments? Well, 72 times 15 equals, you'll have to figure that out. If that number is less than 972, the answer is no, she doesn't have enough water. Number 17, uh, Port uh, Lavaca, <laughs> I can't even pronounce that, fishing pier is 3,200 feet long. Uh, there is one person fishing for each of the 10 feet of length. Maybe they're uh, separating because of COVID here. <laughs> okay, write and solve the equation to find out how many people are fishing from the pier. Well, that's, a, that's an easy equation here. This is 3,200 divided by 10. So let me ask you a question here. Uh, what's 3,200 times 10? What's that equal? You just add a zero, right? 3,000, I'm sorry, 32,000. I just added a zero. There was two zeros, now there's three zeros. You guys should know this by now. Anything multiplied by 10, add a zero, by 100, two zeros, by 1,000, three zeros. But it's not being multiplied by 10. It's 3,200 being divided by 10. And again, you should know this by now. So we move the decimal. Which way do we move the decimal? We move the decimal to the left. Where is the decimal in 3,200? It's right here. So if I move the decimal over, one place, it goes to there, which makes it 320, not 3,200. Just moving the decimal over one spot. So the answer to that question is 320. Um, I'm doing more of these than I was planning on doing here. I think I should stop. Um, I'm giving all the answers away here. So uh, Todd made a table to show the different plans he can use to save $500. Complete the table. Which plan can Todd use to save 500 in less than 16 weeks and have 20 extra? Explain how you found your answer. Um, so here, he needs to save this amount each week. In plan A, it's 20 a week. Plan B, it's 30 a week. C is 40 a week. D is 50 a week. A number of weeks needed to make the goal. Plan for saving $500. So, um, how did they get... So, um... If he saves $20 each week, it'll be 25 weeks um, till he gets to 500 or, or just over that. So that would be 500 divided by 20. Um, if he saved $30 each week, how many times does 30 go into 500? $40 each week, how many times does 40 go into 500? $50 each week, how many times does 50 go into 500? And each one of those answers would go there. And that would tell you how many weeks it took him. That's it. That's all I'm going to help you guys with. <laughs> You're on your own for number 19. Um, yeah, you should be able to do that. Okay, talk to you guys later.